This podcast is brought to you by someone feeling fairly smug about how much exercise they're doing during lockdown. Welcome back to Zestology, the podcast all about energy, vitality and motivation. I'm Tony Wrighton. Hope you're getting on okay. Strange times, isn't it? It is absolutely roasting here in London today and that's been one of the weird things about this lockdown situation that we've had over the last three months or so. It's just been the best spring ever. And yet you can't quite enjoy it in the same way. There's that kind of nagging anxiety and worry that things aren't quite right. I kind of set myself a a small goal of just doing a minimum of 20 minutes worth of exercise every day. And I've hit it. I mean, at, at least for the last month and a half, at least 20 minutes exercise every single day. And most of the time, it's a lot longer. So yeah, I am feeling fairly smug about it. And there is loads of extra time to do that kind of thing, isn't there? And today on the podcast, we ask, how much exercise are you getting during lockdown? If you're spending a lot of time sitting down, and I am actually doing that a lot, as well as doing a lot of exercise, because, well, especially for the first seven or eight weeks, we weren't even allowed to go for more than one walk a day. But if you do spend a lot of time sitting down, you need an anatomy geek. And that's where Celeste Pereira comes in, anatomy geek. Celeste is a self-confessed, a geek to do with all things to do with the body and anatomy. She's a trained physio, one of the world's most successful yoga teachers as well. She'd be far too modest to ever describe herself as that, but I'm going to describe her as that. And she's been on Zestology five times now, so I think you'll enjoy listening. Um, she starts by saying, while she never would have wished this situation that we're in now, this lockdown situation, on anybody and let alone herself and her life professionally it's forced her to adapt and kind of change the way that she works and more people than ever um, are flocking to her classes I mean it's amazing how she's kind of taken off during lockdown and that's just one of the same things the conversations I keep having with people there are so many kind of paradoxes the money worries and the job worries and the health worries that come with lockdown and then For a lot of us, we're just staying at home, eating good food, working out, and have less to do. I almost feel guilty about it, really. So weird times. Um, Here she is, Celeste Pereira, Anatomy Geek on Zestology. Yeah, business-wise, it's gone really well for me um, in the terms of classes because normally I do travel into London and I'll teach individual sessions. Um, but now what I'm doing is conducting the classes um, online and we're doing this interview on Zoom and that's how I do my online classes. And that has been quite amazing. I get about 100 people per class. Um, I teach twice a week and it's, yeah, it's nice to actually just at least see people's faces and see their bodies moving and get to connect with them on some level. I know it's not ideal, but even just that little bit of connection, I think, does go a really, really long way. That's mad, though, isn't it? Because, I mean, look, none of us would have picked this situation. Um, as much as I'm enjoying seeing you and your, your lovely kitchen in the background right now, <laughs> we wouldn't have chosen to be in this situation. But actually it's forced us all into a different way of working. And, you know, once you leave away that kind of gnawing anxiety about the health of ourselves and our loved ones, when it comes to work, there are opportunities that come up. And for years, yoga teachers like yourself have been, I think, kind of rather underpaid by, by, I mean, I know you wouldn't probably say that, but you're probably much too diplomatic. But a lot of these studios, you know, I mean, they have to make money themselves, but Mm -hmm. it's not like you get paid. And all of a sudden you're in control. You'll get a hundred people turning up at once. That's amazing. And you probably would have moved to an online setup if it wasn't for the fact that you were forced to. Well, do you know what? I actually had the plan before coronavirus to do this. And I already had all the piggies in a row. I was ready to launch online. And it was literally the week that I was launching online that coronavirus outbreak happened and everybody went online. Um, But you know what? I'm happy for people because the little teachers that are maybe getting nine or 10 people in their class, if they're charging 10 pounds a class, they're making 90 pounds. And honestly, that is 
so, so good because A, they're not having to travel in and teach the class and have the interaction with the students, which ta can take a long time after practice if they're asking questions and then travel home, which means that they're, they're getting 30 pounds for up to three hours of work, sometimes more. Now they're making 90 pounds for one hour. And for me, I just, when I hear things like that, it makes me so, so happy because I just think that it can give people a different revenue stream and it can really change people's quality of their business. What do you, I mean, do you think when this is all over and it seems to me that it's not just, we're not just going to click our fingers. It's going to be a, a, you know, back to normal again, is it? It's going to take ages to get back to normal. And you look at so many industries, the airline industry, for example, you just think, how on earth are they going to go back to normal? I mean, Sky Sports, where I work, you know, I, mean, I just cannot see how we'll go back to exactly the old days in two or three weeks time. Do you think that when we are able to go out to classes again and we are able to go in person, a lot of people would think, actually, do you know what? It's quite nice doing a class at seven or six or eight in the evening and then rolling into bed afterwards. And maybe people will just carry on doing it that way. Yeah, who knows, Tony? I think that the large proportion of our clientele will want to stay online. Um, but I do send out surveys after all of my classes to kind of assess, you know, how do people feel about the online classes? What are they missing about being in their studios? And a lot of people are missing the human interaction of going to their studios and seeing their teachers in person. They, I, you do get that sense from the surveys. Um, but I also have been talking with a lot of different people and they're like, Oh my goodness, I'm really just loving. You're like doing all these different classes and not having to leave my house. So yeah, I think there's definitely going to be a bit of both. That's a great idea. So, I mean, you, I mean, we could, a lot of us could learn from that. Do you, how do you send, you just send them an email saying, can you let me know how you found it? Yeah. And also just kind of finding out um, things like what was their audio experience like or the visual experience, um, the music experience, like just to kind of gain more of a holistic understanding as to each person that came. Well, not everyone does the survey, which is a shame. Otherwise, I would have a lot more data to look at. But just to kind of get a bit more of a feeling about what could I what within, within my power, what could I do to help that person have the best class ever? Yeah. And then I know that sometimes people don't do those surveys. So if anyone maybe tags me in a post saying they've been to my class or if anyone I know as a friend has been, I always ask them, please, please send me feedback. You can't hurt my feelings. I genuinely want the class to be perfect for you. Um, and if, you know, if I've talked too much or too fast, just please tell me because I really do want to improve. Yeah. You have to be careful with feedback sometimes because obviously, you know, on Twitter, we occasionally get a kind of couple of Twitter jockeys who have something fairly negative to say about what we what we're doing on Sky, for example. And one comment from somebody who might not actually or might just be wanting to be a bit malicious doesn't necessarily mean you should change. But obviously, that feedback is great. And I'm really impressed that you're doing that. And, I, and it's inspired me to ask for more feedback about Zestology. <laughs> no, I totally take your point. For example, someone gave me the feedback that they did another teacher's class online and that teacher's class was better in their eyes. They feel that that was a nine out of 10. They said to me, this is their word, oh. but I feel like Celeste, yours was a seven out of 10 because, <laughs> and no, that's okay. And yeah. then they gave me the, this feedback and this is, so you have to tease apart what works for you as a person and what doesn't. Yeah. So they said, the other person held postures for a really long time and you kept moving. So it was a little harder for me to keep up with you. So I was like, okay, I'm definitely never going to be the yoga teacher that makes people hold postures for a long time. I'm just not part of my ethos as a you know trained physio and someone who believes that movement is lacking in people's days. I want to keep people moving. But the fact that they said, oh, actually, I really struggled to keep up meant that I just needed to slow down a bit more. Yeah. And so now my, when I'm teaching, I try and speak a bit slower and I, I maybe just give them a breath or two in the pose before I take the movement. Um, and that's helped me, you know, it helped me improve a that's lot. That's great. I mean, it is hard. I'm, I don't think I've ever been that good at feedback, but especially <laughs> when, when someone in authority tells me to do something, my immediate instinct is to tell them where to go. So, um, <laughs> so I think, you know, I probably could improve with feedback, but I'm very impressed about that. Um, I, it's such unusual times. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is movement. Um, yeah, I know yeah. that you are obviously, as well as a yoga teacher, a trained physio and a self-described anatomy geek. And um, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about movement because I've noticed some trends over the last few weeks. And uh, at the moment, 
my partner Faith works three days a week. So it's kind of daddy daycare for three days a week. And actually, while I'm doing that, there is a lot of chance for movement. I'm definitely working out more than I ever have. I'm doing at least half an hour's kind of workout every single day at home, which is fantastic. Doing loads of steps when I walk to the shops and with the baby in the buggy or whatever. And getting the chance to bake loads and meditate and all the rest of it. But then on the days when I'm in vertical, was working from home, like today, recording podcasts, I have barely set foot outside all day. I haven't had time to mm. work out. And I noticed I woke up this morning with a very cranky back as well. And I think the experience of lockdown for many people probably will be that movement is quite difficult. And even if you're doing like a half hour class, the rest of the day, you're just stuck inside. I mean, it's dreadful weather today. Well, we're just stuck inside. So what, what do you think mm-hmm. about kind of movement and making sure that your body is in its optimal position at this time? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I want to try and pretend to your listeners that I've got it nailed and, you know, I'm moving all the time and I'm going to give advice. And I just want to put the caveat in there that I'm actually finding it difficult myself to follow this advice. Um, but maybe by me telling you, it'll be like telling myself and I'll get my ass into ah, here. But yeah, basically, that's that's <laughs> there is a really good phrase that I always refer back to. And it's that... Um, movement a little and often is a lot better than chunks of movement all in one go. So for example, if you're doing an hour every day, but the rest of the day you're sat at your desk, that's actually less healthy for your body than if you break that hour up into three 20 minute segments and you scatter them. What's difficult, I think, is actually something that we're always trying to achieve and that is flow state. So often you hear people going, oh, you've really got to achieve flow state because then you're in the zone and then, you know, you won't want to come out of what you're doing. And I feel like what's happening with us is that we're achieving flow state in our work in front of our laptops and our phones and sitting down in chairs. And then it's very difficult to peel yourself away from that. And that's why we end up in very static positions for such long periods of time. Now, I'll just quickly refer back to that statement because a lot of people are like, well, why is that? And the example I always give is if you were living out in nature and you had only your bare hands to survive, there would be a plethora of movement that you would have to engage in literally moment to moment for just pure survival. And that is what your body has evolved to do. It hasn't evolved to be static. And a lot of the people that I have worked with that have been in a lot of pain, they really are people that aren't moving very much. And so, you know, little and often is definitely the way to go. But this flow state is kind of pulling us out of the ability to go, okay, I'm going to do my 20 minutes now. Because it's hard, you know, you've got 50 things on your to-do list. You're in the middle of a very important email you've got your boss calling in 20 minutes and then you're like i can't just get up now and leave all this stuff and then go and move like it just it doesn't make conscious sense at the time so i'm i'm not going to pretend that i've nailed it but again if there are any little strategies which i feel could help i would say please please do that hour of exercise if you have got the hour or the half an hour first thing as soon as you wake up don't don't even do your hair just get your kit on and exercise get something in your day so that if Let's say you get into that flow state and you can't do any more. At least you've done something. But another little tip is at least in the middle of the day, just before you eat lunch, just get on your legs and do make, make a commitment to yourself to do just maybe one thing. If it's 50 press-ups or 10 squats or a big stretch or a walk around the block, but just commit to doing that one thing. And then at the end of the day, apply the same strategy just before dinner and fingers crossed even if it's just a few minutes it'll add that little bit of movement that dynamic movement to your day and actually that will help your brain it'll help your brain function at a much higher level than when you actually are coming to do your work and give your best at that yeah i've been using this app called uh, dailyo have you heard of it no um, what is it i'll well, write you, it down you know it's called it's, it's spelt d a y L I O. You and I did a meetup years ago, which I organized, didn't we? And do you remember the presentation I did there was about tracking my energy levels? Yeah. Um, and for years I've been using spreadsheets and trying to work out, you know, oh, on the days I have a certain supplement, are my energy levels 3% higher? 
Well, finally, there's an app that does it for you and it's called Dailyo. It's very good, actually. And it tracks your mood and then it tracks all the sorts of things that you might have done during that day and sees how it would affect your mood. And surprise, surprise, when I move and when I do a certain amount of exercise per day, my uh, mood is like 7% better or something like that. So, I mean, wow. and, I, and I know that because I, I just know, you know, for one of the really nice things we've been doing every morning is going for a walk at the start of the day. Half an hour walk, that's when the exercise is, you know, we're allowed to go out for half an hour a day, go for a nice walk. And you always feel differently when you get back into the door from when you left in the first place. Um, but it's a nice reminder what you were saying about you know one hour of exercise isn't as good as three 20 minute segments to stay moving yeah and you know what it doesn't have to be a big thing like let's say you're like well i can't do three 20 minutes like that's just not it's not practical so it's not going to work then even if you just commit to doing those 10 squats at lunchtime just before you eat you know it's just that little bit of extra movement because i don't know if you're finding this but because we're working at home yeah. there's not that opportunity to leave work to clear your mind okay i've left work now work is behind me i'm now going home which is in front of me and it's a whole different experience they're all intertwined and i'm finding that for myself it's very difficult to peel myself away from my devices and very difficult for me to go okay now it's time to switch off um yeah i, I have to be honest I'm, i am finding it difficult as i'm sure many of your listeners are as well yeah, you are now what is known as a laptop jockey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just interrupting this podcast for one moment to remind you that it is brought to you by P3OM. This is the amazing probiotic that you can try for free. You've only got a couple of days left to do it as well. Um, yeah, it's the Bioptimizers offer for May. And they said that for May, they would give Zestology listeners a free bottle of P3OM. It's worth about 50 bucks. So it's definitely worth claiming. I think you have to pay shipping, which is a couple of quid or a couple of bucks or whatever you want to, however you want to say it. Um, so shipping only, and you get your free bottle of P three O M. And you know, if the stress and the financials and the sickness and the quarantine worries of lockdown are weighing heavily, one of the ways that you can start to boost your immune system is in the gut, and that's where the Navy Seal of probiotics comes in, P3OM. So if you want to go to p3om.com slash Zestology free, you can claim your free probiotics, but be quick because this offer is not going to last very much longer. If you're in the UK, they're working on it, but you can't get your free bottle at the moment. Anywhere else you can get a free bottle of probiotics, but not in the UK at the moment. But if you're in the UK, you can go to bioptimizers.co.uk slash Zestology and get 10% off. Anyone else, get your free bottle of P3OM. Back to the show. It's really hard, isn't it? I mean, we actually bought a standing desk, um, which is great fun because you press a little button and it goes up and down. But it's <laughs> quite, I, I find that I don't stand that much at it, but I tend to move up and down which is, I suppose, quite good because at least it's a bit of movement. It's not just sitting. And I remember seeing a post of yours a while back on the neck and how uh, when we hold our heads forward, it places so much, it's such a load on the neck and therefore the back as well. And I think getting the wrong position when you're on your laptop, that same thing can happen. Of course. Um, your attention is outside of your body when you're working. And I feel like because we're sitting for so long, the it's unnatural forces and loads that are on the body. So the head drifts forwards. And what it weakens are muscles right at the front of your cervical spine called your deep neck flexors. Now, if they get weak, the head, of course, goes into this forward position. But the muscles that then take all the strain to try and keep your head on your body and stop your head from just flopping forwards, are those tight upper trapezius muscles. And I'm sure we've all had the experience after a long day at work, yeah. you kind of grab your shoulder and you massage it because oh, it's so tight and so tender. And that muscle has to work particularly hard when your deep neck flexors are weak. And so that is why kind of training, I don't know, everyone listening now might want to try this, training to imagine that there's a wall behind your head and the back of your head is just pushing gently into the wall behind you. Um, and you'll feel like you grow tall, a, a little bit taller, and maybe you get a slight double chin appearing. You don't have to go so far that that's a very unsexy double chin appears, but just go a little bit further back with the head. And what you'll notice is that a chain reaction of muscle activation starts radiating all the way down through your core and your back. And it's without any conscious thought. Like, a lot of people find it's really difficult to remember to sit up tall and pull their tummy in and, 
And actually, studies are now showing that that's very negative in terms of your breathing function, pelvic floor function. We want there to be more of a natural engagement with those muscles. And one way to achieve that is just to get your deep neck flexors a little bit more part of the party. You know, at the moment, they're in Mexico. They're sipping cocktails under a sombrero somewhere. <laughs> they don't even know, like, what's what. And if we can just get them to be present in our bodies, it really can make a difference for the rest of the body. Yeah. It's also, I think if, you sit, if you're sitting at a table and the laptop's below you, I mean, we're mm -hmm. on our setup on, in our studio at Sky, we've got it's fantastically good setup. The only thing that isn't perfect is the fact that these screens – are kind of set into a kind of shiny desk. So on screen, it looks fantastic, but it means what I have to do, and for anyone who's, well, most people won't be watching this, but I have to lean forward at about a 20 kind of degree angle just to be able to see my computer. And when you're doing that for four hours, wow. not, I often come and I feel kind of, because actually what happens is mm. the head is quite heavy and the back and the neck is mm. having to hold my big heavy head as I look at my screen. So. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Everything else is great at Sky, but that that's certainly probably I could probably um, and there's no way of really sorting that out unless we sat at a different desk. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's such a shame because I was going to say, you know, in terms of um, legally, ergonomics is a huge thing. Yeah. So if there was a way to kind of modify the setup, that would be just yeah. you know, well, can't they bring I mean, the screens closer to the edge of the table? Well, I mean, the thing not is, really. the thing is, I am. We do have iPads as well, and we've got all our scripts on our iPads, so that is fine. But sometimes, you know, when you're writing something, if I'm writing notes or something like that, it's easier to do it on a computer than it is on a, mm. on a, on a iPad. So, anyway, it's not too bad. Is but, clunky. Um, but yeah. just a little bit of advice for you of course, the deep neck flexes are something you can think about, but also something that you'd need to have at a very, very high level in terms of strength. And actually, this would be helpful for anybody listening. is we need to be strengthening our posterior chain. And what I mean by that fancy term is all the muscles in your back body. And that includes the muscles of your glutes. Your glutes are meant to be the biggest muscles in your body. And the reason for that is if you think about our evolution as man, we've started off as quadrupedes and we've kind of become bipedal. And actually these huge big glute muscles enables the erect position of the body to stand upright and so if you are leaning at a slight angle forwards you'd need to have highly developed glutes to take the load as opposed to the rest of your body right yeah i've been doing um an online program called pvolve i've been banging on about this to my followers have you heard of pvolve no. it's kind of like a cross between a workout and pilates it's very small mindful movements you'd love it actually okay um, cool i'll look and, it up uh, yeah it's great and it's all about the core with kind of mindful workouts from say 15 minutes to 50 minutes and okay. i mean how often would you because i find for me i find that yoga and I'm, by the way i'm definitely going to do one of your online classes when are they they're on tuesdays at 6 45 in the evening british summertime and on saturdays at 12. okay so kind of when you normally used to teach or you used to teach yeah. thursday evenings yeah, Thursday nights was yeah. my regular night at Trio. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what was I saying then? You were telling uh, me about p -Vol. Yeah, p -Vol. Um So I've been doing <laughs> these p classes. And whilst I find that yoga does help, I find I really need to strengthen. I mean, I mm -hmm. personally feel like I could do a kind of core abs and butt workout every other day and it would suit me well. <laughs> does that sound like too much? So actually, Tony, I think what your body, do you do any resistance training? uh i don't i don't know what is resistance like training like oh yeah I mean, well in normal times i do like, I, i've got the gym up the road but obviously at the moment i don't really have weights here so i'm doing i've got ankle weights for the people stuff and that kind of thing but yeah okay so um just going back to my analogy of when you were living out in nature always what we want to think of is our bodies existing in a natural environment now if you had to survive with nothing but your bare hands you would be lifting loads all day long. You would be lifting children and food and water and building materials from the morning till the night just to ensure survival. But what do we lift these days as modern people? We have our shopping delivered to our doors. We lift our iPhone and our laptops if we have to go from room A to room B. But we don't actually get that same amount of load through our posterior chain. And remember, that's going back to the posterior chain I was chatting about later. Think about every time you lift your baby up, what should be engaging is all the muscles of your back body go into what we call a concentric 
activation, which means they shorten as you stand up. And that activation is what gives you, again, standing up, holding baby. That load is being held with your posterior chain. Of course, other things are moving as well, but that movement from low to high is, of course, your posterior chain. Now, if we're living in modern life and we don't have that load going into the posterior chain, of course, if you don't use it, you lose it. So we atrophy. The muscles get weaker. They start disappearing. And so, yes, you do want to be doing your, you know, tums and bums. I think that's what you really want to call it. Hey, Tony. But tums and tums bums. And tums. Yeah, yeah. tums and bums. That's what yeah. you're doing every day, isn't it? So I'm <laughs> doing pretty much every day. And to be honest, <laughs> I feel great after I do it. You will feel good. You will feel good. So, and this was my point. Yes, yes. These things are fantastic, especially from a rehab perspective. But it's not necessarily giving your body what it needs in terms of natural evolutionary movement. So if you could buy some kettlebells for your home or maybe some resistance bands, keep doing p Don't ever stop. I think it's fantastic that you're doing this, but I think it's important to maybe as you progress, add in some of those loads that you would have if you were yeah. in nature. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's lovely to talk and catch up again. It's, it's been ages, hasn't it? It's been a very long time, I know. It's great to see how much you've flourished. Well, you too. I know person. that you, you've always been very um, very successful and very motivated as well. And you said when you were talking about, you know, we talk about the movement and how you said, oh, you know, maybe by telling you this advice, it'll give me the kick up the butt I need to actually do it myself. Are you, how easy are you finding it during lockdown to get a lot of exercise in? I'm, I'm quite good because I'm making sure I do something every day. Where I'm struggling is what I described before was like, once I get working, I'm like, I can't stop. I must keep going. <laughs> that, that, is, that is my Achilles heel as a person. I'm very like, you know, I love my work so much. And I, I always have this probably, it's maybe a bit of fear that, oh, I'm never going to get my to-do list finished. And I must finish it. There's that thing inside some of us. And so, and that high achiever kind of weird mental state is something I have to work on. But um you know, at the start of lockdown, I was quite good because I was really making myself do my exercise, do my work, go for a walk. At least every day I had that rhythm. And just the last few days, I don't know what happened, but that kind of uh, has fallen by the wayside. And so, yeah, I'm so grateful to have this chat with you because, like I said, it's going to give me a kick up the bum. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I tell you what's nice as well, that the first few weeks of lockdown, um, I had some great into even though i say it myself some good interviews lined up with some quite big names and i just threw them all out the window and just recorded a load of new stuff based on coronavirus and boosting immunity and everything and as time's gone on and we've got a little bit more used to the new normal and we're not quite so hooked on the 24-hour news anymore and the boredom sets in a little bit as well it's it means that yeah. the the kind of the vibe of the podcast is starting to be a little bit more positive again and this one is as well so so thanks for that it's, yeah. it's nice to, to get a little bit more positive again yeah, man, I tell you, I, I was really hooked on the news as well, like most of us in the beginning. But then I realized that actually it wasn't serving me. So I completely, I went back to my old ways and eliminated the news. And I have to say, I've been feeling much, much better since I've done that. Because um, a, a phrase that I try and live my life, by, I'm not saying I always nail it, is control the controllables. Like, what is it that I really have control over? And if it's something that is like my myself, or my friends, or my family, or my business, of course I can put effort into that, but I, I can't help what's going on in the world. And if I keep stressing about that, what's that doing to my internal world? Yeah, yeah. That, well, that's something that I know is good for me to do, but it's not always very easy to do, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I think for you, maybe because your work is so heavily involved with the news, it's a slightly different mind space that you have to be in. You've got to kind of stay quite current. These podcasts mean you've got to know what's happening and when you're interviewing in, you know, in the sports world, you've got to can't come across and be like, oh, what's been going on in the world? Whereas I can be a little bit more like Dumbo, like ah. just climbed out of my rock. Ah. And I'm like, everything is happy and fluffy in the world. And actually, you know, <laughs> and in a way that works for me because it makes means people coming to my classes need that dose of positivity. But I think you've got to really be rooted in what's going on, you know, so I appreciate for you it's different. Yeah. No, I mean, you're, you're right, but I'm good at switching off as well. Don't worry about me. Um, now, Celeste, one, I've obviously asked you this loads of times before, um, but it's been ages since you've been on the podcast. It's really good to see you again. Now, what is one 
book that you would recommend and one tip for living with more energy and vitality. So it can be, I tell you what, we've, we've been looking quite a bit at fiction books recently. It can be something you've read recently. It can be your favorite mm -hmm. book of all time. What's one book you would recommend to people? I really enjoyed the, um, audio book um, i'm going to suggest if you folks enjoy listening to stuff um get trevor noah's book on audio born a crime it's so freaking funny man <laughs> i mean i i just think i find it difficult to sometimes laugh at all stand-up i find stand-up can sometimes be not very clever it's maybe a bit slapstick and some people love that but for me I, I i don't i'm not quick enough to pick up some of the stuff but i always laugh at trevor noah and his book although heart-wrenching at times is hilariously funny you learn so so much um about the history of apartheid um, and where that actually comes from because we, what we have to remember is although south africa was this melting pot for apartheid it actually stemmed from europe and when you start looking at the laws in europe and how that kind of infiltrated down to a country like south africa it is really fascinating from a historical perspective he obviously has all this comedy his own life story will blow your mind away it'll just it's wow. fascinating what has happened to him in his life and it gives you a whole new appreciation for his rise to fame you, you want it for him after you've listened to his book and um because he narrates it it's a really ex um immersive experience because he's absolute genius with um accents and he, he speaks so many languages and the way he then delivers the content with all these voices and all these accents is just it's highly entertaining you learn a lot and you have a good giggle so i would say that's a good one born wow. a crime yeah yeah by trevor noah that sounds great and what about one tip then for living with more energy and vitality again i'm i'm not going to say i've nailed this one and i'm definitely giving myself the advice as i speak to you and your listeners but just take a moment at least once a day to just be in the moment it's so easy to project, especially now we're always like, what's going to happen and what's going to happen for this and what's going to happen for this business and these people and all these different things. And just take it one day at a time and at, at least once a day, just be fully in this moment. Lovely. It's great to see you again. You too. I'm actually glad I get to see you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, hopefully in person, hopefully I'll get to see that kitchen in per person at some point, you know, <laughs> um, Likewise. Where, where can people find out more about what you do and where can I sign up for your class? So, I mean, uh, my name has got funny spelling. I'm Celeste, but I have no E on the end. And if you just Google Celeste with no E on the end and yoga, oh, hopefully, I'll <laughs> hopefully I'll come up. Hopefully I'll come up. <laughs> but my full name is Celeste Pereira and um, yeah if you type in Celeste Pereira I will also come up um, and obviously as soon as you come onto my website you'll be able to find my classes or on my Instagram pretty easy and so yeah oh, it would be so amazing to see some of you guys there <laughs> yeah. I can't wait I can't wait to do it I, I definitely will um, well listen I, I was just going to say before we log off and um, it just goes back to something you said before you said with yoga some of the movements are quite big right so you don't always know if you're doing things right I think that is a legitimate concern in the yoga practice do you find you get any pain after the practice yeah sometimes I mean you know it's, it's, I've not always found yoga to be that straightforward with kind of aches and pains in the same way that a workout will nearly always feel better afterwards yeah yeah, and I think that I totally know where you're coming from. And it's one of the things that I've really had to adapt as a teacher for myself and really figure out what is it that people really need versus what is yoga traditionally always looked like. And so, yeah, I have modified my practice a lot to, to kind of get that feel good feeling afterwards. And there is a lot of focus on the booty, getting <laughs> that booty stronger, <laughs> maybe a bit like your P-Volve stuff. <laughs> oh, great. OK, well, um, see you for some booty focus yoga very soon. Uh, it's lovely to talk to you again. Uh, stay safe and well, and we'll speak again soon. OK, oh, to you too. Thank you so, so much for this. I appreciate you and all the people listening. Oh, thanks, Celeste. is it for
for this episode of Zestology. Thank you to Celeste. If you'd like to sign up for the Three Zesty Things newsletter, then you can head to tonywrighton.com. I've been talking about some of the workouts that I've been doing on there. I know I spoke about it a little bit with Celeste, but um, P-Volve is excellent. The class is completely wacky. I've only done that once or twice, but um, my partner Faith, she loves that. Uh, loving the Carol AI exercise bike as well. I've been doing that almost every day. I've been doing a lot of stretching um, and meditating, and I've got very into the Qigong now as well. In fact, next week, I have to talk about this on the podcast at some point, I think I'm doing a 12 Rivers introductory Qigong course. I have no idea what that involves, but I know it involves doing Qigong twice a day for a week at 11 and 5.30. So that's quite exciting, isn't it? It'll be interesting to see how it works around childcare. I might have my son kind of crawling at my feet while I'm doing a little bit of Qigong, but we'll see how it goes. So yeah, I'll talk about that definitely in the, um, in the newsletter, which is tonywrighton.com if you want to sign up for that. Listen, thank you so much for uh, downloading Zestology, supporting the podcast as you always do. Please do remember to claim your free bottle of P3OM probiotics. Delighted to have partnered with them and um, a cool little offer that they've done for May and it only lasts until the end of May, I think. So probably want to get done sooner rather than later. In June on this podcast, so starting next week, we're going to have a little magnesium challenge. I'm going to do it as well, so I'm looking forward to that. In the meantime, thanks for listening. It is a gorgeous day here, so I'm going to carry on doing my allotted daily exercise. We're actually allowed unlimited exercise now here in London, so I've been taking advantage of that to do lots of strolling. It's quite hard to socially distance. I found joggers especially don't seem to respect the two-metre social distancing rule, but they're probably knackered from all the jogging. I find myself muttering under my breath, get away from me, when they jog past too close. But uh, a <laughs> little, little insight into the inner workings of my brain there. Okay, that's it for Zestology. Time to wrap it up. See you next week.